Okay, so quick overview of the alarm. So here we go. The time right now is 10.31 a.m. And my alarm is set. It's just set for 9 a.m. We're going to go ahead and make that adjustment up to 10.31 a.m. All right, and now we are going to be on a sensor watch. So how I've made this alarm is I've created a time sensor, which just gives me the time. And if I hop in my sensors.yaml file, we will platform time date, display options, time, and date. Then I went ahead and made a template that converts the time that is right now into a timestamp. This one right here has just a full 12 hour AM PM. So that's 12 hour with the symbol, minutes and AM PM. Pulling in the time that's right now from my time sensor. Then right here is just a sensor for just PM. Now I've got a couple of these made. It's another sensor for just hours in 12 hour and just minutes in 12 hour. Once again, when you make these, make sure you attach the time sensor or sensor dot time. Um, let me keep going down to some other sensors. I got some days of the week sensors, some month sensors, um, and all that. So these two sensors right here, my A alarm and A alarm trigger. I would really make this whole thing happen. So my A alarm is how you see me setting my alarm. So this gives me a value that I then compare to the actual time. This right here is the actual time. And I say, is that actual time equal to the value that I've set in my alarm? And if you want to see to set my alarm, it's just some um, input selects. So input select for hour, input select for minute. And down here I have my input select for AM, PM. So we are going to hop back over here and go to my alarm states. We're going to scroll down. And right down here is this alarm tester. In just a second, it should go to true because the sensor dot alarm time will be equal to the time of the day, which should trigger this alarm to go true. Let's see, let's see. So my computer time just turned and true and you should have just heard my computer say alarm and that's because if we hop over to my configuration my automations I have created an automation and it's really quick it just says the state is my sensor dot a alarm trigger and when it goes from false to true then it moves on to the next condition, but this A alarm trigger comes from my states, from my sensors, I'm sorry, right here, A alarm trigger. And after that goes off, it asks, what is the state of my input boolean that is A alarm status? Is that state on? And that input boolean is controlled right here. This is a conditions um, button or card on top of a picture entity card. So if that's off, then the alarm won't go off. If it's on, then the alarm will go on. And I'm probably going to change this 
so that it doesn't even show a next alarm when the alarm status isn't um, chosen. But carrying on, if that is true or on, then it just goes down to the next state, which is call service, Google, translate, say, alarm. And you can change this call service up to do something else, um, call another service. You can make a, a wake up um, script or a wake up automation and have it call that. So you can do a bunch of different stuff with this. But we're going to hop back in to look at how I made my A alarm sensor, not the trigger, just the sensor. Um, and I'm clarifying this with an A alarm because my name is Ashley. This is my alarm. I'm going to have to kind of remake all this with um, a T alarm for my husband, Tony, which I know you should be able to use variables or something like that for it, but I'm just not there yet. So here we go. My A alarm is made up by the states of input selects. So the state of an input select that I've created called A hour, A alarm hour states turned into an integer with a colon in between and then states of the input select of A alarm minutes with just a space and then the state of an input select a alarm um, am and pm state so we're going to hop over really quick and check out those input selects so here we go so my a alarm and my input select dot yammer is just my options am pm a alarm minutes, minutes option. So this right here is why I chose to go with input selects instead of input numbers for my minutes and my hours. When I was doing input numbers, I couldn't get my double zeros and I couldn't get my um, my zero five. So I went ahead with input select and then I put quotation marks around my double zeros and then over here in my sensor. If you notice at the end of input select, I have integer, but I do not have it at the end of my um, my minutes. I only have it at the end of my hours, so it doesn't convert that over to just the most simple time format. It leaves my leading zero, which I need because all that sensor is checking is to make sure that the state matches the state of the time and the state of the time has that leading zero and then we flow down 10 15 20 25 and you can make this whatever you want to you can actually go ahead and type out every single minute so you have your options um but let's scroll not that far down let's scroll to here my hours option just the same thing 1 through 12 um under the hours tab and the other reason why I like input select more than um, input number is because with the input number, I was not able to do one simple thing. Oh, she's all jacked up. So here, as you can tell, my, uh, oh, that went off. My computer's starting to run slower than the program here. And I'm running into a couple of problems here. Let's see if it works on this one. Just open up another view that I think is refreshed. We'll see, we'll see. Is she got Yeah, so that other view I just don't think I refreshed it from when I adjusted my Lovelace. Who knows? But this one is the one where I formatted my text down so it actually fits. So here's something simple that I could not do 
with input number. I couldn't just bounce back around from 12 to 1. It would make me go all the way back around. And here I am just going the other way. And that gets really frustrating when you're trying to set your clock. Let's say I'm on 12.55 and I really just want it on 12 o'clock. I can just tap up to 12 o'clock before I couldn't. So I had to make that adjustment. Um, and I really have this layout here in the most basic of layouts. So you can see what I'm actually trying to show you and not be distracted by any kind of colors or anything else that I put on here. You can go back and format all that stuff yourself. Um, so a peek at the code, and I'm actually going to record myself going through this code but here's a peek at the code to actually make this thing pop out and um, kind of make the flashing happen over here let's see To make the flashing happen to make the pop out come out and all that I'm gonna give you a quick peek at that code before I shut this down this is my a doc YAML so it's called bedside lamp because I literally just copied over the the pop-up card and just changed some things um, until I figured out how I wanted it to go it shouldn't be called bedside lamp it should be called like alarm clock or something simple so it's actually all of my cards and my views are um, picture entities cards. So this is a pop-up card that is holding a picture entities card. And that picture entities card is holding a state element with my alarm sensor in it. And that's the thing, the number that you actually see change in the pop-up. That is holding a bunch of up and down arrows, as you saw, and those up and down arrows um, make adjustments for my input selects. So all of that. Then we get into the actual clock, which is where I add in my keyframes under the actual picture entity card that you see on the back one. And then that's my inside temp, outside temp, all that's going to change. So here we go. Here's my actual time formatted and my AM PM that I wanted a bit smaller, so I broke that off into something separate. Here's my toggle for my alarm, which is a conditional card with keyframe added right here down the animations under the style. And then as we go down, You'll see I have, um, that's the end of my conditional card. You'll see I have the exact same alarm setup with no animation and it's not in a conditional card. So it's always there and that conditional card just pops up on top of it when it's on. And then we'll come down here and we'll see I have a state label. The prefix of it is next alarm, but the actual entity is just a sensor that alarm and it's all just formatted one tip i want to give it's so much easier to make um big displays like this if you're actually in the yaml instead of in the ui i started off in the ui and it was hard and it sucked trying to figure out my spacing and then um in what is that vs code you can have this rainbow indenture which has really really helped me Hey, if you guys have any other tips or tricks that you guys want to give me, or you want to see me make any other videos, just let me know. Um, subscribe, leave a comment, like, post, share, um, and just let me know if you have any feedback that can help me out. Thank you.